Hello and welcome to the third episode in the Blender for Motion Graphic Artists video casting tutorials. This is the episode on basic animation. So you might think, wow, third episode already, and we're already doing animation. That seems really scary. But honestly, it's not. You're, you know everything you need to know so far for animation, for basic animation. And that's all we're concerned about right now is just the the interface and kind of how to make things do sort of the, the, the basic ideas that you're going to then build upon, which we'll build upon together. But for now, let's just get the basics down. If you've ever animated with a keyframing application before, you honestly already know, like you could honestly probably figure it out practically with, with the exception of one, one key th one key press that I haven't told you about. But I'm going to not assume that you know everything or that you've ever animated before. So we'll, we'll just keep this really basic and just bear with me if if you know how to animate with keyframes already because you you can probably use the refresher on the interface unless you've just been really good and done all of your homework. But I mean, come on, who who does that? So here we've got our our good old basic kind of default setup with that blender kind of comes with by default and that is really boring cube and camera now as i mentioned la well first of all if if you did your homework surely you'll recall that the default layout is something that we do not like and that you should be in the animate layout right so we're all there i'm sure we are because you've done your homework and you were really careful not to be in the default layout so this is the animate layout we've talked about it a little bit but let's let's go over it a little bit more detail now since we're going to really use different parts of it. So again, this is the 3D view. That's kind of our you could say it's our view panel, our viewport, but it, it's really not. It's more of our world view because you kind of have to keep in mind that you're not you're not in the scene in this in this view, right? You're you're outside of everything. You can you can go around, under, over everything is just you're kind of floating around outside of this you get to see everything in here and that's a good thing and it's it, it can be a distracting thing because as i demonstrated i think in the very first episode sometimes you'll think that you're moving an object completely in front of the camera and then you look through your viewport up here in the upper right corner and lo and behold uh, the object is barely on screen at all um, and that's that's really just because of the 3D space that you're trying to interact with in two dimensions. That that gets really complex. So the nice thing about this animate view is that you do actually get to see exactly what the camera sees. And that's what real that's what really counts in the end, right? I mean, that's why you're animating. You're animating to achieve a certain a certain sequence of of graphics. So it doesn't really matter what's going on around the 3D space as long as it's happening on the screen itself. So animate mode, or animate uh, layout, I should say, is really nice for that because it, it makes sure that you've always got a view of exactly what the camera is seeing. Okay, so... I didn't tell you how I did that. So if you hit the Z, Z key in, the, in really in any viewport, in any 3D view, you switch back and forth between a simple wireframe and a, a very basic texture. So you may or may not want to do that depending on, well, the speed and, and the, the specs of your system. But you, you, I find when I'm actually animating that it gets kind of difficult to see that little wireframe sometimes. So I like to turn on the, the full full view. And that way I get a little bit better of a perspective on, on what, what the camera really is seeing. Okay, so move that G and Y to constrain it. So I'm moving it off frame, out of out of frame, as you can see. And it's awkward doing that in, in really, honestly, for me at least, in any degree of 3D space, because I, I just have no idea how how close that is to the camera. I honestly don't. Resize it, and it gets even worse. Now, I really don't know. Is it far away from the camera, or is it just a small cube? It gets really confusing, and that's the times where you just kind of want to 
I'm going to look at it from different angles and figure out where exactly it is in relation to that camera. And then always keep an eye on the camera view to make sure that you know what the camera is seeing at that point in time, uh, which right now is, well, now it's zero frames. Of course, animation is the interaction of an object in space over the course of time, correct? So if, if we take time out of the equation, then we've got an object in a certain space, a certain point on this world x, y, z axis. And then we might move that object. And if there's been no time between that movement, then there is no animation, right? I mean, there was animation just now because you, you're watching a video of me moving it. So in a sense, that is animation. But, but if you think about it from a, a, from the camera's perspective, there's been no real movement there. It's the, the, the cube has been in one place and then it was in another. That's not animation. We need the cube to move to that space, to that, to that point in space over a course of, of time. So that's the, um, that's the basics of animation, right? And here's how to do it in Blender. It's, like I say, it's actually quite similar to every other keyframing animation software you've ever seen. Let's take a look over here on the left. This is the dope sheet summary. Right now you'll notice that it's completely empty. This is our uh, keyframe manipulator thing. Graph editor, I guess is what it's called. Oh. Graph editor. And this long strip down at the bottom is our timeline. And you'll see at the bottom of the timeline that there are controllers that'll look pretty familiar. There's a play. There's a another play. There's a rewind, a rewind to the very beginning. Um, all kinds of things, and we'll, we'll, we'll use those in a minute. So those are the, the extra panels in the animation that we're going to worry about for now. So we'll see a lot of activity, activity in Dope Sheet and uh, the graph editor thing pretty soon here. First, we need to tell Blender that at zero frames, the cube should be located right there. How do we do that? Well, we keyframe it. We, 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 we put a special frame in the Blender sequence that says the cube exists at that point at zero frames. And the way that you do that is you position your playhead on zero, which it is now. You position your cube where you want it. Make sure your camera's where you want that as well. And then you hit I. I gives you this long list of potential keyframable attributes. In this case, we're going to keep it simple. We're just going to keyframe the location of the cube. And sure enough, like I said, in the dope sheet summary here, we've got lots of activity. And uh, what it's telling us is that we've added a cube into our, into our dope sheet, into our little animation graph. Um, we've got cube action happening here. And we've Keyframed location in this case, and, and the location in 3D space simply is X, the Y, and the Z uh, point. The center point of this object exists at these X, Y, Z axis, axes. And we can see this in another way in our little graph view. You can kind of see the Y and the X and the Z, and you can see these little orange dots, and those are kind of the, uh, well, they're not kind of, they are the keyframes. So that's a couple of different views of the same things, and, and that's, that's all these little diamonds. That just means that, yes, at zero frames, sure enough, you've got a bunch of keyframes established. And they're kind of hierarchical, right? So that if we're just looking at the dope sheet, we'll know that, well, at zero frames, I know we had some keyframes. If you drop that down, then you know, well, the cube of, of all things has, has been keyframed. Drop that down. Sure enough, there's some action going on here. Sure enough, there's some location stuff, and yes, we've, we've, we've keyframed all of those things. In some objects, of course, you'll be able to keyframe certain attributes without keyframing others. And then, in every case, you, you might have a keyframe on the cube in one, one place, and a keyframe on the camera somewhere else, and so on. So this can get pretty, pretty complex, slash messy. Um, but, all we need to know for now is that at zero frames, we've got some keyframes. Uh, zero frame, we've got some keyframes.